What's up everybody, Cats007, and today, I think I'm gonna double upload this, because I wanna upload the first round. We got Backyard Against Survivors versus the one and only Sprinter, and hopping right into it, I got nothing else to say. Yo, he doesn't ban Mechanic as Dream Witch, and honestly, I really like it. I think it's absolutely smart. The reason why he didn't ban Mechanic is because of how he was trained to deal with it. I had a very long conversation with Persuadable after PR versus uh, B4U and Koa. And he likes to keep Mechanic as Dream Witch because she's easy to take down. No abilities, nothing to deal with. So although the Cypher Rush is prevalent with Mechanic, it's not that big of an issue if you're able to clap her within like, let's say 60 seconds. You know, so hopping straight into the gameplay, we got Dream Witch, who is going to end up spawning towards um, Grave Red, I believe. Um, the mechanic is going to spawn towards um, Corner House. So this spawn was actually pretty good for Sprinter. And I was talking before, like, the match even loaded in. <laughs> so straight to Corner House, no hesitation. The best part of the map to kite is Corner House. You're not going to find a mechanic, you know, lacking at two pallet. Well, we, they call it island, you know, one of the worst areas of the map. So going to the best area of the map, going after the bot, good discipline from Sprinter and going back and forth. This bot has nowhere to kite. You know, you got no speed boost, nothing to work with. Swings at the pallet here. But it's just my game after my game here, getting the bot down relatively early. This is very beneficial for Sprinter. Good job taking on that bot. You know, because he took on the bot, the Cypress is going to be extremely slow. And it gave him presence, right? So right now, Sprinter is going after this um, mechanic. I feel like right here would have been an amazing stun. So the forward's in middle. If the forward was to stun the patroller, like the, the, the spawn follower, that would have been huge. But um, that didn't happen in this scenario. That's tough. Here comes the owl play. Beautiful owl play. Um, getting the hit here. However, Sprinter does have another leech. He's going to hit him here, take the hit, and then there's his presence. Going to use another leech, trying to cut off his route. Walmart has very good discipline staying in Cornhouse. You're going to see in a lot of these matches that survivors will isolate themselves in a certain location to make sure they promote Cypher Rush around the map so they don't cook themselves, let's say, mid-game. So, you know... They don't, they're not on top of each other's ciphers when somebody dies on chair. He, Walmart's making sure, I kind of said his name. Walmart made sure that he stayed away from everyone's cipher and it's super important. Right here was the biggest turning point in the game. Now, Sprinter didn't have the best early game. It did take a while for him to actually get Walmart down. However, from here on, Sprinter did not relinquish any pressure. He kept the pressure consistently. Right here, I think the forge should have stunned on the chair. Because look, there's nothing on the chair. The leech is at the cypher, and there's only one leech at the chair. That would have been a beautiful stun. Put the leech in a coma, you get away scot-free. So does the mechanic, follow us and do whatever you gotta do. But now the forward is leech, and he's taking a hit here. You know, um, Melk is not the most experienced forward, you know. And I'm not saying he's bad. He play, he would do, do a rescue like anyone else right he played like a, he played like a mercenary you know but if he would have gotten that stun off i think that would have probably progressed the game a lot better however because he got leached and took a hit and this was also a big no-no he ended up rotating towards another cypher so he, so he has a leech on him he's gonna end up getting blinked down mechanic has a leech so he can sprinter has the ability to roam around the entire map and do whatever he pleases so nelk ended up bringing the leech to graveyard and then ended up getting the hit on the entomologist entomologist did have tide turn i believe so ento can't save the leech is all over there no one can de leech because everyone picked up their leech so as you see here sprinter did not let go of any pressure he literally had his foot on the survivor's neck and says you know what i'm not taking it off i'm gonna rub it in for that fact ends up getting the down on the forward on the last cypher so they had the cypher rush right the cypher rush was there it doesn't matter. Dying on top of the Cypher and that rescue was crucial. When you're playing against a Dream Wish, there's a format we all follow. You know, you got to do a good kite, and then you can't afford to get a double hit on top of that. You know, follow that format and you won't crack. Sears across the street can't really rescue that um 
the mechanic. And from here, it's just GG's. You're dying on top of the last cipher. So, rotating on top of each other, dying near the cipher, and then, you know, getting hit after it. I think the forward could have made a lot of better plays. And I'm going to be critical of my own team. I am going to be critical of the other team. I am going to analyze everything. That's what a coach does. You know, so if you hear, oh, you're not saying anything nice about your own team. Well, I'm a coach for a reason, you know? So I'm just going to keep it a buck and what plays could have been better. And I am going to highlight the best plays. I will give credit where it's due. Nevertheless, the sprinter did not give up any pressure. And Eversleeping is one of those maps where if you don't pop that middle cypher, you are going to screw yourself late game. If you cannot pop that middle cypher, right? So if, let's say, okay. How to win on ever sleeping pop the middle cypher and all the other cyphers are in four corners however if you don't pop that middle cypher you can pressure almost anywhere on the map because that cypher still remaining you have that one and then you have another cypher let's say dancing geisha for example in this instance or you have cabin or you have let's say near corner house that middle cypher is in the middle of everything so what most top teams do is they get rid of that cipher first. It is so important to get rid of that cipher. So you get to get so you get to decode the ciphers across the map and basically like a layout. So think of a square, right? You have a square. If you have one person kiting in the corner of one of the squares, this you know, there's four corners of a square. If they kite in one corner, the rest of the corners are fine. But if you put a circle in the middle of that square, that circle is intersecting every cipher. You know what I'm saying? So beautiful job from Sprinter, not giving up any pressure, going for that four man here, going after the entomologist. But I think even though the early game wasn't the best for Sprinter, I think Walmart did a pretty decent kite. Sprinter had the pressure from the mid game forward. And how would this game would have been different? I feel like if the um, four would have done on chair, or maybe some of the patrol or early game that would have made all the difference but from here it's a four man beautiful four man by sprinter and right now they're even you have saber who had a 4k sprinter got a 4k beautiful this one from sprinter and i like the fact that he didn't ban mechanic you know usually back in the day all the dream witches would have banned mechanic you know oh we need to get rid of the mechanic cypher cypher no you play to your own strategy and whatever works for you that's the best way to put it um, gonna end up sharing the Enzo, but from here, it's a 4k. They can't pop that last cypher, and it's just GG's from here. Blink in his back pocket, and he ends up taking a tram here, which is a 4 It's just wasting more time, honestly. But still, um, beautiful discipline from Sprinter, beautiful discipline from the Survivor side. Although they still lost, you can take every loss and turn it into a, a learning opportunity. You know, I I would do the same thing as a beginner forward. Like, I didn't realize that, you know, I can stun the least and share the thing he can do, you know? But from here, it's just GG's. Better days as we move on to the next round. I'm Cash the Will 7, and I'll catch y'all later. Peace.